We're now going to take a glimpse at lowest common multiples. Lowest common multiples, also known elsewhere as least common multiples. Just to recap from another video I've just done on highest common factors, what we needed to do there is we needed to do first a prime number tree or prime factor tree, so break it into its prime factors. Two, second, we needed to write those prime factors on top of each other. So write them on top of each other in order. So the threes on top of the threes, if there were prime factors of three, the twos on top of the twos, etc. And third, we needed to take the smallest of the two in each uh, column. So if we had two cubed and a two, we'd take the two. If we had three squared and three cubed, we'd take the three squared. If we had five and a nothing, so no five for the other factor, we'd take nothing. Low, uh, lowest common multiple or least common multiple is exactly the same thing, except at the end you take the biggest. For lowest common multiple, you break it in, into prime factors by doing the prime factor tree. You write them on top of each other with the twos next to the twos, etc. And then you take the biggest in each column. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. I'm going to think of two numbers off the top of my head. How about 36 and 24? 36 and 24. Now, actually 21, because I've done 24 a couple of times already. We're going to do the prime factor tree, and again I've done a video on this elsewhere if you want to check it out. 36 can be broken down into 18 times by 2. 18 can be broken down into 9 times by 2. And 9 can be broken down into 3 times by 3. The tree looks a little something like this. We're going to circle the prime numbers. So let's circle those prime numbers, those prime factors. And then we're even going to highlight those prime factors, like so. Let's do the same thing for 21. 7 times by 3 is 21. And wow, 7 is a prime number and 3 is a prime number. So we're done. That didn't take long. 7 times by 3. Circle that. Circle that. And highlight them. Second step was to write them on top of each other. So here we go. 36 is 3 squared times by 2 squared. Remember, it's always better to write them with the power rather than 3 times 3 or 2 times 2. That would just get a bit messy. But 3 squared and 2 squared look quite nice. 21 is 7 times by 3. But hang on a second. We always had to write the 7s with the 7s and the 3s with the 3s. In this case, we're going to write the 3 underneath the 3 squared. And the 7 doesn't have any 1, so he's going to go on his own over here. Underneath, for the lowest common multiple, we're not going to take the smallest like we did for the highest common factor. We're going to take the biggest. What's bigger, 3 or 3 squared? Indeed, 3 squared. What's bigger, 2 squared or nothing, because there's nothing down here for 21. Well, 2 squared is bigger than nothing, so it must be 2 squared. What's bigger, nothing or 7? Well, 7 is. Let's see if I can move this over here. So we're going to write 7. There we have it. There's our lowest common multiple. All we need to do now is actually multiply those numbers out to find out what the mystery number is. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 times 4 is 36. 36 times 7 
is I believe 252 but I might be wrong about that 9 times wait, 36 times 252 I'll check on the calculator uh, what are we doing again? <laughs> 9 times 4, 36, 36 times 7, um, 252, there we are. So the lowest common multiple of 36 and 21 is 252. A quick final example, just to show how that might be useful in real life. We have two trains who are leave the station, one of the trains leaves, let's say, Euston Station every 16 minutes. Every 16 minutes. Actually, it's even quicker than that. Every 14 minutes it leaves the station. That's train A. Train B leaves the station every 8 minutes. Every 8 minutes. Train B. Let's be crazy. Let's even do a train C. Train C leaves the station every six minutes. When are they all going to leave the station at the same time? Let's say at 12 noon, I need a bit more information, at 12 noon they all leave at the same time. And the question is, when is the next time, or how long, until they all leave together again? Perhaps you need to take a photo of them all leaving exactly the same time, and you're wondering how long you're going to have to stand there until they all leave at the same time. In disguise, this is a question asking you about lowest common multiples. That number which they all go into, that is what a lowest common multiple is after all. To do that, we're going to need a little bit of space, so we're going to take away that bit. Now, Speedy Gonzales, we're going to do the lowest common multiple for those three numbers. 14 is 7 times 2, which are both prime factors. So let's quickly S highlight those two numbers because they're the two factors of 14 and they're both prime numbers then we have 8 which is 4 times 2 and 4 which is 2 times 2 splitting that into a tree it would look something like this with only the prime factors highlighted not the 4 there we'd have it. Let's highlight those in green this time. And finally, let's do 6, train C. 6 is just 3 times by 2. Highlighting those, they're both prime. 3 times by 2. And let's see if I can highlight that 3 times by 2. Now we've done the prime factors, now we write them on top of each other. So train A is 7 times by 2. Train B is 2 cubed. But I'm not going to write that here because that's where the 7 is. That's the 7's column. I'm going to write it in the 2 column because they always have to be in order, remember? And 6 is 3 times by 2. The 2 has to go in the 2 column, and the 3 is going to go on its own, has its own column. Therefore, oops, so daisy, let's spread that out. Therefore, for our final row, we have our LCM, our lowest common multiple, which is, just to give us a bit more space, well, what's bigger? 0, 0, or 7? It's going to be 7. 2, 2, or 2 cubed? It's 2 cubed. And 3, or nothing, or nothing? is 3. 
Yes, it's that same trick we did with two numbers works just with three. How long are we going to have to wait then? Two cubed is eight. Eight times seven is 56. 56 times three is, I believe, 168. 168. That would mean you're waiting for two hours and 48 minutes. That's quite a while, but that's a price worth paying for a good photo.